YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's Engraven here with another video and in this video I'm here to share my post game thoughts from the game we all watch between the Ravens and the Bengals and this is the final post game thoughts video for this season that that's that's really sad um, but the Baltimore Ravens season is officially over that's a wrap finito is done and it ended just the way that it's been going really with a lot of the same stuff that we've been seeing for a while now check this remember the game last week against the cincinnati Bengals, where the ravens like outperformed them in every statistical category except for turnovers that was the one that killed the ravens last week donated like 21 points to the Bengals last week uh and helped them win well Let's go through the statistical categories before we get into it from this game. Total plays, Ravens had 66, Bengals had 54. First downs, Ravens had 23, Bengals had 18. Rushing first downs, Ravens had 10, Bengals had five. Uh, both teams had two penalties from first downs and both teams had 11 uh, passing first downs. Uh, third down efficiency, now this was big too. Ravens went 3-4-11, went Bengals went 7-13, so they were obviously a lot better on third down. But fourth down, Ravens went 2-3, for three. Bengals didn't go for it on any fourth downs. Um, total yards, Ravens 364, Bengals 234. Total drives, Ravens had 9, Bengals had 8. Yards per play, Ravens had 5.5, Bengals had 4.3. Passing yards, Ravens had 209, Bengals had 183. Rushing yards, Ravens had 155, Bengals had 50. One <sighs> penalties. Ravens only had four for thirty-six. Bengals had seven for forty-two. But turnovers. Ravens had two. Bengals had one. And Ravens lose by seven. Twenty-four seventeen. And what a game, man! It, it was a crazy game. Um, but. As it has been, uh, especially the recent playoff games where the Ravens have lost. It's been whatever, you, and, and this is about playoff football in general, whatever your biggest issue is, or, or some of your biggest issues or one of your biggest issues, but whatever your biggest issues on your team are, they are going to be tried and they are going to be exploited come playoff time. Ravens' biggest issue this season, in my opinion, self-inflicted wounds. Them being their biggest, own, their, their biggest enemy, their own worst enemy. And... Sometimes, like, we, we repeat stuff on here because Ravens repeat stuff on, here, on the field. They will, they continue to, like, battle against themselves week in, week out. We saw it all year long. We saw it all through the regular season, and it showed itself in this postseason game as well. Um, where do we begin? I guess we'll start with coaching, then we'll get to the players and stuff. Uh, a hard ball in this game, I, I forgot who said it. Somebody was like, hard ball, when he's a favorite, he's a bad coach. But when he's an underdog, that's when he's at his best. And in this game, like, everybody was picking the Bengals to win. I remember the, 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 the broadcast before the game. It said, Bengals, 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 Bengals. Oh, okay, yeah, I get it. Um, especially, obviously, with no Lamar, I get it. Um, but. Yeah, Ravens, a lot of times when everything's stacked against them, they, they still show up. That is one thing that you got to give credit to these Ravens for. They will show up. Um, but they'll show up for 59 minutes. But it's just one minute worth of the game where it's like, what is happening? In this game, the especially at the very end, it just got so sloppy and there were points throughout too where it was just so sloppy it was questionable decision making we'll talk about Greg Roman in a little bit but the clock management the poor clock management that's been an issue for the Baltimore Ravens for years but certainly this year even if you exclude all the other years prior this year clock management has been such an issue and nothing changed in the game uh from last night Not, nothing changed at all um then there was a uh, that the last minute of the game, it, I was so confused. These Ravens, they, they, they had a minute. They, they got a first down, and there was a minute left, and they didn't get the next playoff. They had, I think, two timeouts left. They didn't get the next playoff till like there were like 33 seconds left. 
Um, and then I guess this, and then we'll, I guess we'll shift to Greg Roman too. Um, and then like in that sequence, it was so frustrating and, and confusing. Like there's like 30 some seconds left. And these dudes called a draw play. A draw pl- I was like, what? And then on top of that, oh man, it's so frustrating. They called a draw play. Then on top of that, they, they called this draw play, not even with one of their best running backs. Like I love Justice Hill. Justice Hill, uh, he has been he's just a, a really good teammate. He's a sort of do it all kind of guy, special teammate, can play running back, he can catch out of the backfield. He got underrated strength. But it's like you decided to do a draw play and you didn't even have one of your best running backs out there. But first off, the fact that you did a draw play in the first place. And I'm like, what are they doing? Are they playing for a field goal or something? Because that's what it looked like. It looked like they were playing for a field goal. And I'm like, these dudes are down by seven. They're not down by three. They're not down by two. They're not down by one. They're down by seven. What are we doing a draw play for? And it was just, then the rest of the game, then the incompletions and stuff and then Tyler Tyler Huntley got to get that last pass off and I mean yeah James Prochet he kind of dropped it but I, I'm like I'm not I'm not like oh man oh James Prochet you no I mean it whatever um but man I'm like what what was that then another one of the Ravens biggest issues that has been an issue all season long and it's been an issue for years but again I said we're going to exclude the previous years for now but all this season and we talked about this before the season started because we've been talking about this for for seasons we've been talking about this for years but again let's exclude the previous years but this season alone situational play calling oh my goodness situational play calling was bad it was bad it was really bad but that's nothing new Situational play calling, man. Um, again, that draw play. You got 30, 30 some seconds left, and you calling the draw play, really? Now the um, the QB sneak, uh, the the dive with Tyler Huntley tried to reach over and put that ball in the end zone. Before they ran that play, I said they need to just run it with Gus Edwards. I said that before they did that play. I said they need to just run it with Gus Edwards. And um, with them doing a QB sneak, uh, I know the Harbaugh said, oh, well, the plan was for, for Huntley to, um, to go under the pile, not over. Who knows? Maybe it could have been. Who knows? Um, but the fact that they did that on the three, like initially when I was watching live, I was like, oh, no, that, that wasn't a bad play call. That was all execution because Huntley dove. He tried to stretch the ball over and got knocked out. I didn't realize they were on a three. I thought they were on a one. I think Harbaugh said that he thought the same thing too. I said, "Hold on, Harbaugh, don't be messing up your thoughts. Like you, the coach. I'm just watching. I'm a fan. We ain't supposed to have the same messed up thoughts." But anyway, well, I mean, now we both fans of the game because we both sitting on it at the end of the bar together. But that was a poor situational play call because of where you were. If you on a one yard line, okay. Because even Tyler Huntley stretching the ball out, it didn't really even get that close to the end zone uh, to crossing the plane, um, and it, it was just. Poor. There was another play too. Again, Greg Roman in this game, there was a lot of the game where it was actually fine. Stuff was actually straight. The play calling straight. They 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 controlled the clock. They had the ball for a while. Um, a lot of stuff. There was a lot of good, but there was a lot of bad. And the the bad was significant bad because again, situational play calling. J.K. Dobbins, who certainly voiced his displeasure loud and proud. Hey, I guess J.K. Dobbins gonna be getting traded now since he voiced his displeasure with the Ravens. I guess we could say bye to J.K. He's out of here. So, because you, you know, like, you, especially as an offensive player, you want to speak out about, oh, I'm not being used enough. Oh, okay. All right. Bye, Hayden Hurst. Hey, I'm him. I'm, I, I'm him. Oh, I'm a left tackle. Bye, Orlando Brown Jr. I mean, they weren't going to pay him anyway. But, hey, what's the point of having soldiers if you ain't going to use them? Bye, Hollywood Brown. Why, why didn't they use me? I felt like I should have been featured more. Bye, JK. See ya when we see ya. It was fun. Wish you well in your future endeavors. You know how it goes, man. So I, I really won't be surprised if JK Dobbins gets traded straight up. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, they did. JK Dobbins in the red zone. Nothing. Nothing. Like, this was a game where so many people, we just knew. J.K. Dobbins even said it in the interview, like, hey, I, I want to put the team on my back. And I know just because you said it in the interview don't mean it's going to happen. But it's like, all right, J.K. Dobbins, like, w- w- we all knew going into this game, 
he he got to go off. Ravens run game got to be strong. He was getting some nice runs. He was fighting, man. He was fighting. Every time he touched the ball, he was fighting. Fighting to move forward. Fighting to move the chains. Shout out to Gus Edwards, too. Because I, I would question some outside runs that Gus Edwards got, but they were doing their thing. They were working for the most part. Um, but in the red zone, same stuff. Situational play calling. <laughs> Give it to J.K. Dobbins in the red zone. Why should we do that? Makes too much sense. Makes too much sense. So um, that there was the uh, the third and one where Mark Andrews was lined up in the backfield, and I was like, no, they <laughs> they not about to hand it out to Mark. And no way, they not about to hand it out to Mark Andrews. No, they handed it off to Mark Andrews. Waste of a play. Waste of a play. And it's like, why? Why would you why why are we wasting plays? You know Ravens offense like we don't get many opportunities, man. Especially their offense. Why are we wasting plays? For what? What's the reason? The situational play calling is terrible. The the sequence, the lack of sequence when it comes to play calling is terrible and it's been that way for so long. So long. And it just has not changed. Um, oh boy, uh, what what else was there? Cause I know there, I know there was more bad situational stuff than that. But anyway, uh, Tyler Huntley, Tyler Huntley, he uh, overall, I would say he had a pretty good game. I know that interception early on, it was uh, it was bad. It was bad. He, uh, Mark Andrews ran that out route, broke off his defender, and Tyler Huntley was trying to get it to him, but he didn't see that defender sitting right there. And, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that ended up being an interception. Bengals convert that to points, uh, to touchdown. And then, um, then of course the fumble. That, that, it, that was just tough. That, and that was, that was really tough. Shout out to Mark Andrews, by the way. For really like that dude was going trying to make that attack. I know some people were saying, "Oh, that should have been a block in the back on a run back." But anyway, Mark Andrews he was really trying to get to tackle. I think who was that? Sam Hubbard. Um, but man, uh, oh that 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 play was killer right there. That and that was the one. And it's like I was thinking about like man, because Tyler Huntley was putting it out there. Man, he was throwing, he was running and stuff. And they had some like again, the game wasn't all bad from Giro again. Situational stuff though. Situational stuff Like he um, There were times when It wasn't even predictable Play calling Because there was a third and one That they had A third and one And They lined up Like they were about to To, to, to run But they did a play action And threw that deep pass On the sideline to, to Mark Andrews And he went up and got it In traffic Contested catch I said whoa Hold up I said Mark Andrews You know this a playoff game right You don't usually come through To these things But he came through last night I said alright There we go Loved it and they even showed like all they showed all his playoff stats, all the game, all the playoff games that Mark Andrews played, and they showed all his numbers. Then they showed the numbers from uh, the game last night, and then, yeah, big difference. But um, yeah, man, shout out to, to to Mark Andrews, and he didn't have any drops. He didn't have any drops last night. I don't recall any drops from the Ravens. I don't recall any drops. Let me know if I'm missing something, but I don't recall any in the playoff game. I don't believe so, but anyway, um, Tyler Huntley he he played his heart out, man. Uh, that's why that the the way that it ended was just it was tough, and really uh, the the fumble the fumble for a touchdown by the Bengals on a three yard line that play that play hurt more than uh than the actual loss did. I mean that kind of led to the loss, but that was painful because the Ravens like they were right there, man. They were right there getting ready to take control of the game. I think the game was tied at that point, and they would have gone up. And it was like, oh, man, now Ravens could force the Bengals to play catch-up, and Ravens' defense been doing pretty good for the most part. I'm like, oh, okay, let's go, man. I, I, I can get with this. This would be nice. We was on the three-yard the three yard line. No, man. Mm-mm. Nope. Um... But yeah, that was that. So shout out to Tyler Huntley. I mean, just looking at uh, his numbers: seventeen for twenty-nine, two hundred twenty-six yards. 
Uh, 7.8 yards of, uh, of completion for two touchdowns and, of course, the one interception. Got sacked twice. Um, one of those sacks came uh, after that fumble, and that's when it just seemed like the Ravens were crumbling. Ravens, um, they, they've they been holding on by a thread for a long time, and it seems like on the field they've been holding on by a thread for a long time, but off the field as well. It seems like the team, the franchise is at a point where they've just been holding, keeping stuff together by a thread because they've been having just so much stuff going on this whole season. They've been holding on by a thread, but it seems like that thread is, is, is broken now. Is is broken. So this is gonna be a uh, a crazy off season. But um, looking at the the rushing numbers for everybody, J.K. had thirteen for sixty two. Uh, Should have had more, but he had thirteen for sixty two. Tyler Huntley nine for fifty four. Gus twelve for thirty nine. And then of course Mark Andrews. He had his uh his carry. Um, the receiving game. We talked about Mark Andrews already. Demarcus Robinson two catches for forty nine yards and one. For the touchdown, I was like, okay, Tyler Huntley, you put it out there. And Demarcus Robinson beat Eli Apple with that preseason route. Oh, man, I was hyped, man. I was hyped because I loved it. I loved it. And I loved that Tyler Huntley in this game put the ball downfield. Dude, he was doing the short stuff, but he put the ball downfield too. And I'm like, that, that's what I'm talking about, man. That's what I'm talking about. I was somebody that continued to say, hey, let's start Anthony Brown for this game. But Tyler Huntley, he showed that the Ravens, they made the right decision in starting him. Um, Cause he again he he, he did his thing, um, and again shout out to Demarcus Robinson for not dropping. Hold up, he had three targets, two catches. One of the catches was a slant. I don't remember what the third target was. I, I do not think it was a drop though. Uh, J.K. Dobbins four catches for forty three yards. Look at that. He had a screen. He had uh, some catching some yak. Uh, he had one catch in the middle of the field where where they had dropped back uh, Hubbard. They dropped back number 94, Sam Hubbard. I'm thinking, like, hold up. What y'all doing dropping back Sam Hubbard in coverage? He not a Dalfair way. We do that with a Dalfair way. Y'all don't need to do that with Sam Hubbard. Um, <laughs> Josh Oliver had two catches for 26 yards. One of them catches was that crazy catch early on in the game. I was like, I said, Josh, Josh don't start that goofy stuff, man. Just catch the ball, man. We can't afford the silly stuff, man. But he called it Sammy Watkins. Uh, Mr. Go out there and play through the injury. Uh, he had one catch for 12 yards, uh, and that was all she wrote for him. Uh, and Justice Hill had two catches. Patrick Ricard had two targets. But it was weird. When, when Tyler Huntley, whenever he would throw to Pat Ricard, and one of, the, well, one of those was a, a bad situational play call, but whenever he would throw to Pat Ricard, he, um, he threw it short. He, he would always throw it short to Pat Ricard. I guess he, he thought Pat Ricard was a little slower than uh Pat Ricard is. He underestimated Pat Ricard's speed. But hey, that's all in the past now, right, baby? It sure is. Um there was oh, back to the situational play calling. There was a play, I forgot what quarter it was. It was when Ravens were in the red zone and they brought somebody in motion to to the right side of the field. They snapped the ball. Tyler Huntley rolled out to the right, did a pump fake to the right side excuse me, to the right side of the field, then turned around and threw a screen to Mark Andrews. The play itself was nice. It was a nice play call, but in my opinion, and we said this during the stream too, that should have been a play for Isaiah Likely. Mark Andrews draws way too much attention for you to run a play like that with him, in my opinion. Isaiah Likely was in the back of the end zone. I think that's where Mark Andrews should have been because he would have just brought so much attention there. The, the, a lot of the attention was already on the right side because you brought somebody in motion and you had a couple of receivers over there. Well, a couple of pass catches because it's probably tight ends too. But you had a couple of pass catches over there. And with Tyler Huntley rolling out, it's like, all right, all the attention going to the right side. But if you would have had Isaiah Likely there on the left to catch the screen and Mark Andrews in the end zone, everybody's attention would have been somewhere else. Because, yeah, people know Isaiah Likely or whatever, but they don't know Isaiah Likely like that, like that. Um but I just so I didn't think that was a bad play call, but I just thought though the use of the personnel uh, could have been a whole lot better. Um, Isaiah Likely, Isaiah Likely. Now I know Mark Andrews was inactive last week, so I get it. But Ravens still have a problem uh, of getting different guys involved um, and getting guys involved consistently. Again, something that's been happening all season long, and it's something that the Ravens just do. Remember Devin Duvernay earlier this season, obviously before he was hurt. 
He would go off one game, next game, you don't hear a peep from him. He would go off the following game, then the next game, you don't hear a peep from him. They, they, they just failed to have consistency in establishing playmakers. Last week, Isaiah Likely, and I know Mark Andrews is inactive. Isaiah Likely did his thing last week. This t- Today, I mean yesterday, not a peep. You don't hear from him at all. Nothing. So it's just Ravens just, they, 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 they struggle with that stuff, man. They, re- they really do. They, they struggle with that stuff, man. Um, but anyway, um, who else? I just, I see Marlon Humphrey just tweeted he's back and I, uh, that threw me off. Um, so I don't know who he's talking about cause I'm recording this on Monday at 11, 19 AM and Marlon Humphrey just tweeted he's back. <sighs> Probably Greg Roman. Probably got <laughs> Greg Roman signed an extension. Um, but anyway. To get to the uh, defense. One second. Let me. uh, (laughs) Sorry, (laughs) y'all. All right. So, um, defense. Oh, Kyle Hamilton led the team in tackles. I didn't know that. Shout out to Kyle Hamilton, man, because he came a long way this season. Started off struggling a little bit, but he, he been getting it, man. Now I wonder, um, they gonna they gonna give him the chance now to go run stuff um as a safety. Not just in the box though, but really as a as a safety, like taking taking over for Chuck Clark. Because they put Chuck Clark in the box a lot too, but to have Kyle Hamilton drop back. That'll be something. We'll we'll see how that goes. But um Roquan Smith, twenty million dollar per year, man. Mr. Hundred Mill. Um game was up and down for him, but you as you got to make those plays, man. And there was a play where it was third and very short. And the Bengals, they went to shotgun. And I'm like, what? They went to shotgun on third and really short. And Roquan Blitz and Joe Burrow, he, he was right by Joe. And he just missed him. And I was like, ooh, man. And I know with, with him, we already watch these guys closely enough, but then when they get paid a lot of money, we watch them extra closely. And I know it's uh, they, they're not going to be out there. They're not going to play perfect every single play. They're going to make mistakes whether they get paid a lot of money, whether they get paid a little money. It happens. But that play, oh, man, it was just so close, so close. But then they ended up getting a first down. And I was like, oh, man. Oh, boy. But anyway, um. I don't know. Uh, Broderick Washington, he he made some plays. I don't know what the, his status of his contract is, but he going to get paid by somebody. I don't know if he got one year left on his deal, though. He he, he going to make some money from somebody, though. And then he, I, I, I would love to see him go somewhere and get a bigger opportunity. Um, and what, if Calais Campbell retires, I, which I expect him to, that could be with the Ravens. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, I, I just I, – uh, I like what I saw. Oh, Marcus Peters. Marcus Peters. Oof. He was having a rough game early on. Uh, then it got better. Um, Marlon Humphrey, he was having a bit of a rough game early on uh, because they, they were playing so far back. And I know Ravens, they like they don't want to give up the deep stuff. There, and they didn't give up anything deep. They, yeah, they didn't give up anything deep like at all. Uh, I don't – yeah, nothing deep. They gave up a couple stuff over the middle or whatnot, but nothing crazy deep. Um, the Bengals ain't have no, like, big plays, anything like that. So I guess that was the strategy. Like, hey, we'll give, we'll give up the short stuff and come up and tackle. But anything deep, no, y'all ain't getting that. Um, so I guess that part worked. Um, I with Jamar Chase, it's like Marlon Humphrey, he couldn't cover him. Uh, Marcus Peters, he couldn't cover him. I was saying like, hey, where's Daryl Worley at, man? Where's he at? He was the Jamar Chase eraser. I know, yeah, except he did give up that one touchdown to Jamar Chase, but still, man, for the most part, he was the Jamar Chase eraser. Um, but yeah, that. That was that was that man. Um, I don't even know. Like the defense, the fair way he had that that sack where he like he like chopped Joe Burrow down, man, and chopped him down like a tree or something. And uh, but I don't, I, I don't even know what to say. What else to say about the team? Man, the defense overall, they uh, they did all right, man. They did their thing, but I know they they were put in some tough positions um, by the offense. Uh, especially again with the turnovers. The turnovers the biggest thing. Um, but yeah, offense turned they they yeah, they they turned it over that one time. 
But the defense got to turn. I mean, they got a touchdown off of that. I mean, the, the Bengals offense got a touchdown off of that. But then <laughs> when the offense turned it over the second time, Bengals defense, they ended up getting a touchdown off of that. So, yeah, man, that's 14 points off of turnovers right there. And you lose by seven. You lose by seven. But, yeah, that's the Ravens season, man. Uh, and now we get to, I mean, we get to the good stuff. We've been in the good stuff already. Would have been even better if the Ravens were still playing, which I had expected them to be. But Ravens were like, nah, we don't even want it. But anyway, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for, um, it's been a crazy season. It's been a really fun season. Had a lot going on, as y'all already know. But I appreciate y'all for supporting um, along the way I appreciate y'all for watching all these post game thoughts videos And sharing your thoughts uh, Thank you for supporting the channel Thank you for being respectful Thank you for everything man um, Season's over for the Ravens But <laughs> the season is really beginning It's gonna be a crazy crazy off season man and, and it starts like it starts today It starts The off season has started already for the Baltimore Ravens So um, this video will probably come out on uh Maybe either Tuesday or Wednesday. I mean, we could put it out a little bit later since we ain't got to talk about no future Ravens games for a little while. But, um, yeah, man, uh, it, it's, it's been fun. It's been really fun. Uh, cause I know John Harbaugh, he got his presser. Again, y'all will have seen his presser already, but he got his, his presser uh, at 1 p.m. today. Right now it's 11.24 a.m. again on Monday after the game. So, um. Yeah, so we of course gonna cover that and whatever else these Ravens got going on. So I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And just like the Ravens are when it comes to being in the postseason, we out. <laughs>